Salut. Cheers to you. <laughs> Three, two, one, we are back. It's another day. A cold day. A very cold day. In summer. Day, in the London summer. But we um we sacrifice. Yeah. By the way, I do everything and anything for my art. That's why I'm even dressed with this kind of phony knockoff quasi silk probably 100% polyester well it's very with nice a touch of viscose and it matches it. your uh, thank you sunglasses from d franklin by the way another person w for whom a sponsorship shout out nobody should be given nobody is going to sponsor us nobody why are we doing this then you know out of love okay fine fine for our 327 strong subscribers wow and growing okay we i got two this weekend by the way i begged them they're bar people i begged them i said <laughs> i'll buy drinks 40 pounds for two drinks please subscribe very good okay. very good very good one subscription is 20 pounds by the way i appreciate it now listen let me ask you something yeah and i it's a question that i've been thinking about a lot of people think about okay. i know you've been thinking about so it's time to answer the question did trump win the debate it's time Does to he eat cats no okay yes okay. maybe i don't know all right but here's the thing okay the thing yeah robert de niro yeah i know him. al pacino yeah. who's your favorite um, well, that's a very good question. Thank you very much for um, for just throwing me right into the deep end like that. It's a this mandates, I think, proper proper thought and reconciliation. Right. Deep deep reconciliation. By the way, I need to think about it. It's it, it, this is an academic question. Dissect it. It's an It's a proper academic question. Right. Okay. Let's. Okay. How about this? Let's start off. Well, with you're this the interviewer. Uh, no, 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 no. Let's start off with this. Okay. Let's. You know, break it down, tail of the tape. Tail of the tape, what the meaning? Give me the ages. Ah, okay. Pacino, born in East Harlem, 1940, which means he is currently 84 years old. Pacino, 84. De Niro, Manhattan born, mm -hmm. so also a New Yorkie. Uh, born uh, 1943, which means he's 81. So we've got 84 on Pacino, De Niro, 81. Okay, so pretty And similar. both new parents in their 80s, by the way. Fathers. Yeah, well, you know, when you're a freaking international movie star, that sort of thing tends to happen. It does okay, tend to happen, So yes. that's the, the ages. Okay, the next head-to-head, -head, what are the heights? Great question. Celebheights.com, by I know the way. You, I Le knew you'd like that. I knew you'd like that. Let's get into celebheights.com. Okay? Tell us about it. So celebheights.com is the most um, reliable, authentic website that gauges heights. Right. Okay. Thank you. And a lot Shout of very, out to them. You want a, them to sponsor you too? I would love them to sponsor me. And a lot of very, very useful user comments from people ah. who have seen celebrities in person, on screen. In the wild. Compared them. Yeah, absolutely. Compared them, you know, a bit when they were famous versus when they were younger and not famous. Because obviously when they're not famous, they wouldn't be using elevation. Right. This oh, and true. by the way, another shout out, by the way, prospective potential uh, uh, um, sponsorship shout out. Masaltos and Guido Maggi, mm -hmm. two exceptional brands of elevator okay. shoes. Okay. I've researched them. I'm thinking about buying them. Okay. And the elevation can range anywhere between 2.5 inches and 5 inches. Have you thought about <laughs> maybe starting a fashion channel instead of doing this? Can you tell? Anyway, can, okay. you, can you so tell? Can we get back to the height? Okay, what so 5'6", <laughs> aka 1 meter 68 for Al Pacino. <laughs> okay. And, uh, and um, at his one height. Meter 60, 1 meter 68. One meter 68. One meter 68. At his height meaning what? You're talking about his height. Yes. Well, you mean in his five, youth, in five, his prime. Five, yeah, sorry. Okay. At his, oh, very good play on words. At his height, <laughs> his height was yes. 1 meter 68, aka 5 foot 6 inches. Robert De Niro, 1 meter 76. Five foot nine inches. So De Niro, the taller. Height, yeah. But now you're saying because of old age. Well, I think the only celebrity who has, um, as with everybody, that has shrinkage. increased in height. Yes. Despite the old age, is, is Sylvester Stallone. Oh, by so the way. Oh, so Sylvester Stallone, and he's gotten older. He's gotten taller. He's gotten taller. Oh, is he still growing? No, no. But uh, whatever it is, but I just make the point that Pacino. You know why he keeps punching? <laughs> yeah, he keeps punching. But the thing is, is about Stallone, a very interesting thing, um, and a shout out to Stallone. Yes. For like keeping it real. You know, not letting like, not letting vanity die. Sure. You know, uh, you know he's he keeps punching. Okay, Stallone, by the way, and he keeps um, writing. He keeps writing. Stallone, who I think was billed at around five foot eight and a half inches. Okay, in his prime, and there are sh shots of him when he started in a nascent episode of Kojak opposite the great Telly Savalas. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. where he was not famous. This was pre-Rocky, so he was not wearing the elevator shoes. Okay, they probably weren't around back then. By the way, he probably had to custom make them. 
in some what do you call boot makers isn't there a term? cobblers cobblers he probably got them you know cobbled um and so so you couldn't just buy them on the internet okay mm -hmm. so savalas who i think is around five nine was actually taller than the stone so i put stallone in a good five foot eight inches or thereabouts okay but now arnold schwarzenegger with whom he's alongside whom he's photographed often okay who was six one and a half in his prime and that's obviously a real authentic height because he was an athlete stallone now Records. stands stands i think vertically equal to, to, to arnie which okay. is incredible i don't know why that's relevant the next uh, next year he's going to join the nba he's, I, I, like, he gets yes some... it's true <laughs> anyway so listen this is not just to remind you we're talking about pacino and de niro i don't know yeah, okay. we went off on tangent we can do yeah. we can do stallone and uh shortsy on just, another just day. one footnote look at a photograph of stallone standing next to tom Selleck. Magnum PI, six foot four inches tall, legitimately built at six foot four inches tall. They're like one uh, inch separating them, which means potentially that Sloan is rocking seven inch elevator shoes. Impressive. Very good. Okay. So okay. I've completely forgotten what their heights are. Let's move five, on. Five six versus five nine. Thank you very much. Let's move on. All right. How many films have they made? Oh man, uh, I think we're talk We're looking at Pacino at a good around seventy films. Well, they've been working for forty years, right? More than forty years, More right? 40 since years. since their mid twenties, now they're eighty. So, geez, what are we talking about? So Pacino around seventy, years. I think. And you're I right think there, De Niro yeah. is around one hundred and twenty. One hundred and twenty, fine. Because in his like late sort of sixties, he was pumping out three, four movies a, a year. Yeah. But you know, since we're going to be talking about the two great thespians of uh, of yesteryear and this year. I would have to say, when you look at Dirty Grandpa and Irishman amongst their two greatest, you know, entries. Uh, well, that's both. Oh yeah, yeah. No, no, no. And Pacino, by the way, Jack and Jill. I mean, you know, you should watch that. Very good. One of the greatest comedic performances of all time, Amazing. opposite Adam Sandler, playing like um, a female version of himself as well. Um, uh, so anyway, uh, so but let us first pay tribute. Homage. Hold on, hold on. Hold okay. on. I haven't finished right. the tale of the tape. Okay. The head to head. Okay. Let's talk Oscars. Oh, okay. Pacino won for Scent of a Woman in 92, something that had eluded him that he was chasing for 20 something years since he broke onto the scene properly with his first Oscar nomination in The Godfather in 1973. So 19 years later, and I think by then something like six nominations without a victory, he got, you know, the elusive golden boy. De Niro has two wins, got them early, 1974 uh, for Godfather Part Two, Best Supporting Actor playing Vito Corleone and of course in 1980 with raging bull uh playing jay tomorrow very good okay, okay thank you um the other question i was going to ask is obviously this is something that pertains to us and it'd be remiss if we didn't okay. answer it or try to answer it better hair great job great job there's some interesting hair work that well the interesting hair work pacino has undergone Absolutely. Now, now I have to say, like in Godfather, he had the he had the pace down. No, 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 no. In Godfather, in the he first had, and in second. The, okay, he had he had he had the, he had the, the, comb the side sweep. Down. He had the side sweep. And then in sweep. Godfather three, he had the spike. The spike. But in Godfather three, he they kind of like he was supposed to be playing, you know, a uh, a version of himself twenty years older than his actual age. But Pacino's but, best hair in which film? There's only one. Answer. Serpico. Not bad. I was Carlito. Say so. Very good. Let me think. You, but even better than that, I think. I think he's a, a clue. I think oh, a oh, great, great hair. Great, great hair. hair. I mean, great hair. Great all round. You hair. know what it was? It was. It was voluminous. Yes. It was shiny. Yes. And it had a bit of a like a dangle at the front. It had the dangle. It was fantastic. It was I mean, I, and I've sported that also. It's uh, maybe a bit greasy. A, bit no, greasy. but it was. It, it was. was a it was grease. a strong mullet with. You yeah. know. You know, uh, Carlito's way, which is again is uh, twenty years after Serpico. Too much. Too much hair. Too much beard, too much hair. Maybe too, too dark. Yeah. There was a few like nice streaks in uh, heat. You know, a few highlights. Okay. Uh, okay, fine. So do you agree with me on the heat hair? I think he's got great heat hair. Heat hair, good hair. Yeah. De Niro. But De Niro, I think. You know, by the way, I don't think De Niro's had any hair work done. No. I've been, I've been tracking. Oh, and by the way, sorry, sorry. Before we move on, Pacino in his later years, the big boom. Oh, but, but but I think this was covering like some some like hair loss. Issues, sure, okay, sure. and I and think, the, 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 yeah, and the bandana, which like he had in Serpico, by the way, as well. Yeah, but that was actually like part of the character. Sure, like he's, sure, you know, sure. he wears a bandana. Like, you yeah, know, I think basically, I think part of the front hairline, yeah, which can be excused by the way in his eighties, but I think you know, obviously, you know, you, you never stop being a movie star, right? You got to keep up appearances. De Niro, I think, 
has been fortunate enough more to keep his hair like, more conservative when it comes to the hair absolutely and I don't think he's like he doesn't have the same bombast as a personality he's not as kind of operatic yes as a but he had the curls character. can I just give you Go some on. highlights oh, yeah. the curls the very cur short curls raging bull okay. yeah 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 all right okay very good hair in mean streets young very good very good hair good mohawk in taxi driver good slick back quasi mullet not completely different from myself in uh, Cape Fear good hair in Cape Fear I think Great that may be his best the hair slick, the long the, the, the and the long ones and he yeah. had the, he had the yeah. ponytail yeah, yeah, as well right for, like, the samurai yes. for a yeah, little yeah, bit yeah, yeah, yeah. and yeah. also of the mission the mission great hair yeah. oh no 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 you're overlooking one angel <laughs> heart Yes. As Louis C, the devil. Okay, listen. Okay, he had a great look there, like the slick back hair. Yeah. Okay. I mean, we can go on. Actually, see, so not bad hair. Should we just talk Meet about their the hair? Fuckers. <laughs> no, no, I don't know. About <laughs> anyway. Okay, fine. So that's the hair. So if we give him an even even on the hair. I'm going to give De Niro a slight nod but because but I think no, it's kept it more Pacino, natural. But Pacino, Pacino is not like the more extreme hair. Okay, let me just let, let me just quote, let me let me let me let me uh, what do you call it? Clarify it. Yes. Okay, let me quantify it. Yes. Okay. Sorry. Let me qualify it. Peak hair, Pacino. Peak hair, Pacino. Longevity hair, De Niro. Okay, fine. Okay. All right, very good. So that's the tail of the tape. Yeah, that's the tail of the tape. Okay. Moving what, on. Okay. First of all, an homage to Brando. I just need to make this point. I know you're going to roll your eyes, but let me just make, make this thing. Okay, Brando was the first prominent Italian-American actor who came onto the scene. I'm saying, you know, and he represented like counterculture to in the 50s to what was... Um, you, you know, the counterculture to the movie stars of the time, like Spencer Tracy, Cary Grant, yeah. uh, Gable, and these guys mm -hmm. who were debonair, who were handsome, who were matinee idols. I get it, idols. I get, it. And, I and, get and, it. And, and, and Brando ushered in this new age of, as I said, counterculture rebelliousness. And, and his style of acting was okay. very new. Method Tell acting, me about that. Method acting where you're reacting to what's around you, you're not sticking to the lines. Improvisational you're, 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 Yeah, you're ad-libbing, you're you know kind of uh tapping into sense memory and all of these things blah 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 um you've been doing a lot of that yourself recently I you? well i've been trying okay go on yeah all right but you're bringing them back okay okay anyway <laughs> you're getting that ptsd yeah, <laughs> yeah. okay like Thank de niro you. and deer hunter anyway, okay go on yeah um good hair in that but uh, yeah any good hair in that yeah yeah, yeah. regular okay, regular okay no no but here's the thing so yes, he inspired Pacino and De Niro's acting yeah. style, but no, no more, no one more so than Stallone, really. So I think put Brando yeah. aside, focus on Stallone. <laughs> Stallone is the real inspiration. <laughs> it's Thank you. <laughs> okay, yeah, it's true. But you know, no, it, I get it. What you were saying is correct. The Brando kind of led the way. If there was no Brando, there would be no Pacino. There would be no De Niro. Yeah, I mean, the the, the fascination for these Italian American kind of red blooded. Uh, actors, I think, all emotion, fine, well, absolutely. Fine. And uh, incidentally, I don't actually think that Pacino and De Niro have adopted Brando's acting style either, necessarily. I mean, there are, uh, yes there, no. there, there are, I think, there are I certain. Think he inspired a lot. I think after Brando, like everybody was inspired by his, by his acting. By style. his acting, yeah. He may, may may not have been the first person to like be a method actor, but he certainly brought it to the mainstream. Okay, fine. Well, in any case, kudos Marlon Brando, right? Uh, so you, you open the 70s up, they open, you know, they're, they're kind of shot out of a cannon in a sense. Pacino with Scarecrow, which was a little known film opposite Gene Hackman, for which he received great reviews, but it was a small film and it's since received some sort of cult status. Okay. De Niro had done a, a, a slew of films, but then obviously kind of like emerged in Mean Streets, which is his first collaboration with Scorsese. Um, so, and then obviously in 72, uh, uh, Pacino obviously is essentially become like a, a star is born with what godfather you, well yes and I, I, that was that was in my next question yeah. what do you think are their breakout roles what was pacino's breakout role i think obviously godfather okay and for de niro i think godfather 2 which came out two years later okay so they're playing so thank you francis ford for, thank you francis <laughs> ford yeah and and obviously uh pacino's playing michael corleone uh opposite uh brando who's playing his father vito and of course in godfather 2 um, in the flashback scenes, De Niro is playing the Vito Corleone character, for which he won an Oscar. Uh, Al Pacino was nominated. I think it's still his best role to date, Godfather Part Two. 
like really? his most yes, no, I agree his most with you. subtle his I agree most with you. like uh, everything like as an actor like the emotion that he conveys just through his exper expression without saying a word yeah. is the eyes incredible they never lie. i mean that that you know that role and especially in godfather 2 yeah. is is hard to beat it's hard to beat by anyone and whether it be stallone or whoever else <laughs> chuck norris Maybe you're missing in action too, by the way, and invasion similar, USA. Similar, by the similar, good, similar, good, tone. Good, 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 similar tone. I'll give you that yeah. one. Okay. Okay. In any, regardless, they're they're kind of like you know they're kind of becoming the um, in their early thirties the uh, you know the stars of their time. Yes, they're 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 starting to build their reputation. They're becoming household names, uh, and now they're moving into the next gear, right? And I and I think interesting because. Acting style has. Some people maintain the same acting style, you know, throughout their careers. Case in point, Harrison Ford. Let's take right. right, playing, you know, whatever. Absolutely, good point. Good the point. the, the kind like of yeah, yeah, reluctant yeah. hero, right. every right. man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But these two guys emerge on this. He's never done anything different, has he? Not, he not really. No, he just I mean, plays himself, and that's a, that's being a movie star, that, right? That's He's a, just sure, playing, sure. playing or, himself. Or Jack Nicholson, or Nicholson, right? Although, yeah. No, it's he he he. he, he no, he's he just played, Nicholson. No, but but I'm saying that's an amazing yes. character to play. But right? he's just himself. But he is himself, yes. whether he's playing Cuckoo's yes. Nest or the Joker or as good as it gets. Between a movie star and an actor, an actor can convey and take on different characters and different roles, but a movie star basically plays yeah. himself. But the the roles they very pick, much like Alex Caspi. Yeah, that's true. Who's he? Okay, the roles that they pick very interesting, and and a bunch of Oscar nominations throughout the seventies. Yeah. Okay, I mean they're monopolizing. The so seventies is their time. The mon they're monopolizing the well, Academy Awards. Give me some other hits. So ta let's go De Niro first, right? Yeah. So Mean Streets, you've got Scors you've got the Scorsese uh, collaboration uh, in, in its 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 embryonic phase, right? And then Godfather Two, you're, you're with Coppola. You're back in seventy six with Taxi Driver. Okay. I mean, wow. what can you say about wow. taxi? What can you say about Taxi Driver? That hasn't already been. Said. What hasn't already been said? But just just, I know you're a massive good fan taxis. Of and a good driver, and uh, one of the most iconic uh, one of the most iconic lines in movie history. Yes, uh, that'll be twenty dollars fifty, please. <laughs> you talking to me? Yeah, we get yeah, it. We yeah, get okay, it. Okay, fine, 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 fine. You know, okay, yeah, I, I get that. Okay, so um, so this would start his kind of collaborations with Scorsese, right? That would you know continue on for like forty years with you know the greatest comedy of all time, The Irishman, uh, which is basically their cliff note. <laughs> performance which finally you know we really should do, we yeah. should really do an episode of the Irishman for all we deride it it's true but we need we need a uh, we need a uh, live we, audience. we need to... a live audience to laugh at us when we yeah when we, you and know. plus we need to watch it again which it's true we, neither of us want to do no <laughs> okay um, anyway so uh, so so I'm gonna go through a few of the Nero's 70s films sure. okay to, to just sort of uh, highlight. You already did though. The, didn't the brought, you? No, 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 no. The last tycoon in New York, New York. Forget about Deer Hunter, Best Picture winner, Chimino's masterpiece, followed by his like studio disaster thereafter. I think two years later with Heaven's Gate, which I think bankrupted United Artists. But with the Deer Hunter, one of the most harrowing. I think it's my favorite Vietnam film of all time. Did them all? Yeah, exactly. Did them all? Exactly, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Deer Hunter you playing <laughs> Vietnam, playing playing Vietnam vets uh, alongside Christopher Walken, who won the Best Supporting Actor Oscar. Meryl Streep, I think that was one of her first roles. Okay, and De Niro playing. How can I describe him? Uh, melancholy, sullen, but heroic at the same time, like a confluence of. Um, emotions and characteristics and attributes all coming to the fore nominated for an Oscar doesn't win it okay but I think you know there was a bit of probably well he would he would maybe score his biggest win two years later with Raging Bull now Raging Bull considered by many to be the best film of the 80s and De Niro would by the way just 10 years later but you can talk about Raging Bull in a second 10 years later he would make probably the best film of the 90s with Goodfellas okay? absolutely but and and there's not a lot in between these two. I wouldn't say two, it's the greatest. Ball. I wouldn't say it's the greatest film of the '80s. Okay. I mean, it's a great film, but it's a bit of a like you know, it's not. You know, Goodfellas for me is somewhat of an easy watch. It's a fun watch. 
you know there's a lot that entertains entertains you a lot that engages you with raging bull because it's maybe a harder more dark story and the fact that it's black and white as well doesn't make it as accessible now what is interesting uh, okay. about raging bull yeah i mean don't get me wrong it is a great film it is a great film i'm just saying it's not as mainstream as goodfellas but the interesting thing, and the thing that stands out the most about Raging Bull, is the physical transformation yep. of De Niro. Okay. And before that, I mean, there may have been examples, but that's really again something that brought it out to the to a wider audience. The way he gained weight, you know, the shape he was in initially, and then subsequently, he won an Oscar for that. Yeah. And that has almost become a formula for winning an Oscar for, winning for an Oscar, act, Oscar uh, for actors subsequently, whether it be Matthew McConaughey. Whoever else, Brendan, on, Fra Brendan Fraser. Recently. Thank you very much. Yeah. Good example. Yeah. So you know, a lot of actors have done that, and you know, De Niro kind of set that benchmark. It was. It was. It's true. It's the. It's probably the most iconic physical transformation on celluloid that you remember. I think it's. It's the original one. It's I mean, the original. Do people consider Brando's? interpretation of Vito Corleone as having been that or no, was no, Brando no, no, already no, no, like no, no, no. That's, he was already put on yeah, yeah, all that yeah, weight yeah, by yeah, then yeah, yeah, yeah. he didn't transform and into Vito Corleone as you know a famous scene out of Raging Bull is right at the end where oh, he's yeah. now become a comedian yeah yeah uh, Jake LaMotta after becoming you know after being a, a world champion boxer uh, and he recites the iconic scene from on the waterfront with Marlon Brando yeah sure, sure. I could have been somebody I could, I could have been, have been a contender. Something. Okay, so um, instead of a chump, so so an, an impressive an impressive body of work for De Niro in the seventies. Pacino arguably more impressive body of work in the seventies. Tell us about it. So seventy two Godfather, seventy four Godfather two. I know you're not a hundred percent sold on the legacies of the Godfather as being the two kind of greatest. Uh, I don't even think you rank them as two greatest gangster films. And I'm not sure I necessarily disagree with you, but you know, obviously in the pantheon I, I, of great I, films, I, I they can, usually I, rank them at the I top. I appreciate them, I appreciate them. I understand why they are so highly acclaimed. I get it. But as a, like, as a watch, as something I enjoy to watch, they're not up there, you know? It's Goodfellas, it's, you know, it's uh, Married to the Mob. It's those the, last dawn. <laughs> the Last Dawn. <laughs> the Last Dawn. No, no, good TV, teasing. Good TV movie, yeah. No, listen, don't get me wrong. It's funny, I prefer Godfather 2. Which one do you prefer? I, I prefer Godfather 2 as yeah. well. Uh, and um, so, but of course, you know, um, what is um, the film that's bookended by both these is Serpico. Uh, another Oscar nomination for Pacino playing, you know, uh, the honest cop against the corrupt system. One of his like also most iconic roles, one of his great iconic looks. Uh, a, a transformation, not, not, a, not a massive physical transformation, but when you see him in 73, playing this kind of shaggy haired bearded detective on either side of playing the world's most like violent mob boss it's interesting it's an interesting juxtaposition and then obviously thereafter there is dog day afternoon uh one of the great uh films of the 70s and you've got um and justice for all uh which is which is the which is the start of Pacino's shout. Okay, so th th that's what I'm saying. So the, the which is the, then became his trademark. The exuberance, the the bombast, uh, and the uh, yeah, absolutely. The precursor. The, the heightening of decibel levels uh, where not needed, by the way. Um, although in the in the iconic courtroom scene in and Justice for All, yes. the, the, the 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 culminating scene yes. when he does this about turn yes. and he's he's essentially become disillusioned yes. with the law justice and so on I think it's mandate who's like, the actor? John Forsyth is, who played Blake Carrington yes, love it. is the guy who he's Great defending hair. amazing hair and one of the most regal very uh, regal the most regal very gentleman very regal Right? Very gentleman. -like. In the in the in this in the vein of a, a Clark Gable yeah, and yeah, a, yeah, yeah, a Cary Grant. Should have been bigger. Definitely should have been bigger. But right? listen, whatever. He was Blake Carrington. Yeah, we so need like, to do a, like episode on him actually. No, no, that would be a good one. Oh, John Forsyth, uh, yeah, John Forsyth versus uh, Larry Hagman of uh, J.R. J.R. Ewing. Thing. Yeah, fine, good one, good one. Good, right? Good one, good like one. the the the, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, the patriarchs. Let us know if you'd like that episode. The please. patriarchs of know. the. And don't forget to subscribe. Of the and don't forget to like. <laughs> and don't forget to comment. What was it Bla the Carrington and the Ewing oh. households? Yes. Okay, so um, 
but uh, but but a great courtroom scene and and yes the, the the birth of his like shouty performances okay so these guys like are king of the hill in the 70s playing actually very different roles i think de niro has taken on the more kind of like tough guy role especially with deer hunter can you just tell me this yes who do you think wins at the end of the 70s i think uh, well the fact that raging bull uh, came in 80 no no that came uh, in 80 okay, so i think he probably filmed in 79 but i think pacino is the bigger star even though fine. even though de niro fine. has the oscar fine. okay fine. Fine. but but and i have to say something then, then we move into the then, 80s. then we move into the 80s by the way and it's uh, i think w what's happened now is that a, a, a lot of filmmaking um, is a, you could say, call it a metaphor of what's going on in the political well, climate, I think, in the, I mean, in the, in the economic me, climate. Because I like to like take everything back to one core event. I think the Iranian Revolution changed everything, right? So we had the Iranian oh, yeah, Revolution. Okay. What did Every, that do? <laughs> everybody becomes a bit like, especially the America feel like a little bit defeated. So they have to become gung-ho and suddenly everything becomes a bit jingoistic well, and, and, and patriotic. And, we got Reagan in charge and, now. And the fall of Saigon in and the Vietnam, fall of, right? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Minor. Anyway. Minor. Yeah, true. <laughs> anyway, Reagan comes to the fore. Suddenly it's about being bigger and better and stronger and nobody's going to defeat us. And that's the end of that. And, you know, and then some, that is translated into into the soft power, into movies, into like popular culture. Yeah. Suddenly muscles are bigger, explosions are bigger, bu budgets are bigger, all of these kind of filming things. Is, filming time is more condensed, yes. I think. The, the, the slow burn films of the 70s. Gone. Um, were, and a I, new I, wave of the 70s, gone. Correct. And I think yeah. De Niro and Pacino are able to shine because they're method actors. And I think obviously during the 70s, against the backdrop probably of Vietnam and yeah. Watergate and yeah. these these kind of dark events yes right which darken probably the mood but heightened maybe the filmmaking right they they, they heightened the quality of the art okay and all of that was gone i completely agree with you so in comes reagan with this jingoistic nationalism uh nuclear um stockpiling star uh, wars star wars <laughs> not the movie absolutely uh, you know what it's very funny the first star wars film yeah or the first story, which is episode four, but that's the first one, yeah. A New Hope. Yes. Now, it came out in 77, yes. but it's it's almost like it's almost like it's ushering in a new, It's almost that was almost a, a, a metaphor for the new kind of filmmaking that was to come, right? Yeah. So special effects, special effects did not really exist in the 70s. I think no. it, it emerged with Spielberg, True. with Lucas, well, and then later with Bruckheimer. Well, there was all the, the like Greek mythology films that had a lot of like Ben Hur stuff. and yeah. no, 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 no. I'm talking about like um, you know those Achilles and uh, uh, Clash of the Titans with the stop motion. Anyway, I must have missed some of those. <laughs> okay, yeah, those are the but, best. but 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 okay. But I think you know we, we, what we're seeing is you're right. Like. The, 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 the political climate is changing. Yes. So, okay, 80, we're, we're going to win this. We get it, we get okay. And De Niro and Pacino, right, now basically in their 40s, okay, like Connery in the 70s, okay, yeah. Connery had this massive lull, yeah. okay, that he, and he would re emerge in his 50s, okay, in the 80s. But these two guys, they kind of go into quasi hibernation, particularly Pacino, surprisingly, okay, but De Niro is kind of taking on more supporting roles yeah. in the 80s surprisingly and I think this is obviously because of the, the, the strong advent of like you're right like the, 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 one, the, one, man, the one man army yes. um, but not just that because they Norris were, they were <laughs> listen I'm telling you something yeah Code of Silence watch it amazing film by the way all of and Delta Force 2 Operation right, Stranglehold, decent, decent. great movie. I was never a massive Chuck Norris anyway, fan. Uh, I'm on. a massive Chuck Norris fan. And great Wheatus, hair, hair I dog. mean, as a human, I love him. Have you seen how good he looks? He looks, he looks amazing. He looks like 83. He looks yeah, like, like he's like 40, dude, by the, the way. the training videos? Yeah, amazing. Okay, okay. So, Chuck, by the way, if you want to sponsor us, yeah, please, yeah. All right, Have go on. Okay, okay. So, um, what are they saying? So, but but it's not just, but De Niro and Pichu would not that? have been competing. De Niro right. and Pichu would not have been competing for those kind of roles anyway, right? They would have been competing maybe for more like serious roles. But in any case, um, they are, I think they've been kind of marginalized by bigger, better, louder, more voluminous, okay? Uh, action stars for sure. But even guys like Harrison Ford, Michael Douglas, Richard Gere, all these guys are starting to emerge. These kind of, if you're not doing big action movies, then it's, the, it's, like, a, it's like the strong sex symbol. Uh, sex symbol era, right? Yeah. Okay, so you've got like 
um, Once Upon a Time in America for De Niro, which... Bit of a flop. But a bit of a cult status after the fact, but at the time not, not uh, kind of, kind of went, went under the radar. Um, Falling in Love, which was forgettable. Uh, opposite Meryl Streep, you've got Brazil. That was Gilliam film. The Mission, Angel Heart. Oh, De Niro's in Brazil. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I love Brazil. Anyway. Okay. Uh, the Mission, Angel Heart, for which way he plays a cameo. Bit of a flop, 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 flop. Okay. Uh, the Untouchables, but a cameo role as well. He Again, put, like, he put in a lot of weight for yeah, that yeah, movie yeah, as well. Yeah, 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 so he yeah, was yeah, doing yeah, a bit yeah, of a yeah, yeah, yeah. La Mora. But yeah. he, he's not a. It's not a stand-up he's, performance. And he's, not, he's not like a main character. He's not a main character. No. Midnight Run, we've talked about that before as one of my favorite okay, underrated on. films. Tell us, give us a little bit. About Midnight Run? Well, well I just think really. it, Yeah, we I talked th- about and, it. And by the one of his favorite, under- watch the other episode if you haven't seen it. One underrated. of the top 10 underrated yes. films of all time. Was it part one or part two? Mm. Anyway. Two. I think two. Part we'll, two. We'll put a link below. <laughs> Check it out. Okay. Um, anyway, the, the, his first sort of comedic role oh by the way we forgot King of Comedy by the way oh yeah by the okay. way so the I know you love King of, Com- of Comedy yes I do love King of Comedy flop when it came out yeah subsequently I think his like you know people now appreciate it far more I think it was a bit uh, ahead of its time in so far as you know the style and the tone which now has been copied I mean it's got that sort of mockumentary yeah. style the guy who's so uh, like unaware of himself on bordering on psychotic you know a bit of a David Brent bit of a Michael Scott yeah, yeah. I mean and, and you know you see the Joker today I know the second part is coming out soon but that Joker is purely inspired by King of Comedy King but comedy. King of Comedy is a genius film yeah. and I watched it obviously like 10 years maybe after it was first released 15 years after it was first released I loved it yeah. I loved it from yeah. the get go it's hard to also see De Niro in that kind of role I think that maybe also put people a bit off and Jerry Lewis of course he's fantastic in that film he's amazing and, and in Sam, that film. Sandra Bernhardt and Bernhardt's great right. in that film and then, yeah, that's, that's a great film now at the time didn't do so well so we'll put it down to a flop 80s a flop decade yeah. for both those actors but, but we haven't come on to Pacino who had even even bigger lull in the 80s quickly tell us about but, it um, but uh, finishing off, by the way, with We're No Angels opposite Sean Penn. Oh, yeah. Do you remember that film? Yeah, I never watched yeah, it. Yeah, I mean, I it's, remember again, the poster, it's, 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 it was okay. Yeah. I remember watching, actually, I remember watching it in the cinema. But um, then you've got, then you've got, um, what do you call it? Uh, De Niro, uh, sorry, Pacino, who goes into like, a, like, a, a, like an even more stark hibernation. What do you think that was about? I'm not sure. I need to, I need to read his uh, biography. But um, barring Scarface in 83, which... Despite its, but again, flopped when it came out. I, I, I mean, these it, it, films, it was, a lot of it, these films have been like you know have, have been popularized after like ten years after they came out. Well, right? look, I mean, Scarface is obviously one of his most famous roles, one of his most famous gangster roles, one of the most famous gangster roles of all time, mm-hmm. right? Uh, a remake of the uh, Howard Hughes film of the 1920s. Okay, I mean, pretty much a different film, but but contemporized yeah, for yeah. you know uh, modern audiences about Cuban refugees and the you know the American dream the American dream gone sour and the original uh, I think he's an Italian refugee but anyway is he? I think so okay well I haven't, seen, I haven't seen probably it probably wrong but um, uh, this is also like a, a uh, again a, a sign of what's to follow with Pacino where the eccent- eccentricity and the uh, the volume is dialed up to 10 I think in his performances Tony Montana is obviously a uh, uh, a, a, a very imminently quotable character lots and lots of uh, iconic sound bites um, um. yes absolutely but like for me like what's interesting about that decade for both of them is that De Niro f- is sort of sticking to like what he knows or stick at least Pacino's trying to do something different a different accent a different nationality a different background a lot of De Niro stuff is still Italian American based sure sure right I, yeah I, I think so I think I think um, I think there, there's a big like love I think there's a film called Bobby Deerfield that he does in yeah. around 82 or something like that that's like oh cruising is a film that directed by Friedkin which is set in the world of like uh, uh, there's a there's a there's a murder in a homosexual homosexual underworld, homosexual underworld. And it's a film that like, Pacino, like I think, has like distanced himself from. I've never actually seen it, but it's got it got very good reviews at the time. But again, it was like not a box office bonanza. Probably very very dark subject matter, and um, and um, and there is then the kind of the, the the renaissance for both of them with 
in 89-90, there's obviously Sea of Love for Pacino, uh, which is one of the first in what would be a long line and slew of erotic thrillers uh, that were prominent in the 90s mm -hmm. that kind of peaked with Basic mm -hmm. Instinct and that would spawn thereafter some poor kind of what they used to call Skinemax imitations like Sliver, Body of Evidence, J Showgirls, all these films. But Sea of Love is, that's a great underrated film so opposite Ellen Barkin. And it started in his kind of late 40s, early 50s, I think maybe 48, 49 years old, Pacino at this point, his renaissance as this kind of like sexier kind of middle-aged guy well it's and de niro funny. does and then de niro's big sort of big comeback in 1990 he does two films goodfellas maybe the greatest crime film ever made okay and i mean what can you say about goodfellas funny. hasn't been said and awakenings for which he was oscar nominated opposite robin williams but what's but these guys are strong starting strong in the 90s what's interesting is that in in the 90s they become like as you said mm kind of sex symbols suddenly like every like you know they're like you know pinups everywhere they're like on the front of all these magazines whereas in their like 20s and 30s nobody like blinked nobody thought of them like that right suddenly like you know De Niro's dating Naomi Campbell Pacino's Uma Thurman like, Uma, yeah all of this kind of yeah. stuff everybody freaking loves them Pacino they're, like in uh... every like magazine they're like you know uh, the brand ambassadors for all sorts of things <laughs> like it's funny that like that all happened to them in their 50s and not earlier but i think it helped but it's, it's this, a, I think a changing it, climate i think, I think it's, the changing it's climate right. there was a changing climate change in politics change in you know kind of uh, popular cu culture and this idea of like the cool bad boy gangster who, and who's better at that than De Niro and Pacino? No, no one. Suddenly nobody. became like something that like aspirational. It became aspirational. Everybody wanted to be like that cool gangster in the beat up like Cadillac, coming out at like three in the morning, collar out. I mean, that's how we used to dress, even right? Definitely, yeah. Suit with the collar out. What do you mean? What do you mean back then? Stuff. Still now? Still to okay. This day. Um, but uh, listen, like uh, I think I think in the nineties, right yeah. now they're in their fifties, right? In the nineties is where they're pumping out, in my opinion, their best. Okay. And this is this is when we kind of when became we became aware of them we, we, because you know we're, we're going to the cinema we're going to the cinema I'm watching like, R-rated yeah, yeah, films yeah, yeah, yeah. this time. Okay, so I'm just going to knock off a few a few yeah. of De Niro's '90s installments. Okay, and let's 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 look at like let's look Guilty by Suspicion, Backdraft, Cape Fear. Now Cape Fear, by the way, I mean neither of them, neither Pacino nor De Niro has played. I don't think like a a, a, a morbidly villainous. Uh, character that you despise. I mean, they played bad guys, but you, but the bad guys that you love. But they're the protagonists in that right, film. Right. Okay. In this film, Nick Nolte's a protagonist, and uh, yeah, De Niro's the antagonist. And so, even if they played these shady characters, they've always been the lead. They've always been the protagonist. They've always had an enemy. In this one, De Niro is the enemy. Yeah, and he is scary to the bone, right? As Max Cady. By the way, another physical transformation that he underwent. He went ripped, he went jacked, right? Um, that's a remake of a Robert Mitchum, Gregory Peck film, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, you're right. Who both have cameos in the yes, uh, remake. Correct. And it's a Scorsese film. Yes. And by, you know, I watched that film recently. I'm, I, I appreciate now, like some of the subtle nuances, the score and the, I don't know how, I mean, I'm not a, I'm not a director obviously, but the mood that Scorsese is able to build up this, this no, kind tension, of this kind tension, of tension, tension that kind of like that that, that yes. kind of engulfs this yes. little like kind of quiet kind of and kudos a, to sea, the, yeah, sea, like a seaside he really, town. He tries, yeah, yeah. He tries to like he takes on different themes, amazing, and different films, amazing and different genres all the time. Um, okay, okay, but I'm saying okay, so Cape Fear. We've got okay some some forgettable misses. The Mistress, Night, uh, Night in the City, Mad Dog and Glory. This was a, a Bronx Tale. De Niro's directorial de debut. Okay? Yes, starring Charles Palmateri. Uh, yes. Um, and that That's, kid. <laughs> and that kid. Okay. Uh, Mary Shea's Frankenstein. Not good. Okay, we're going to... Kenneth Branagh. Okay. 19... Kenneth Branagh directs. Yes, that's right. 1995, by the way. Could there be two stronger entries? Maybe in the Although, annals of... can I just say something about Mary Shea's Frankenstein? It's the truest to the original... Representation? To the original novel. Oh, the Bram Stoker, yeah? Yeah. Okay. No, Mary Shea. Mary Shea. <laughs> You're saying Mary Shelley. Yes. She's the author. Oh, she's the author of Bram Stoker's Dracula. Bram Stoker's Dracula, Mary Shelley's Frankenstein. Right. Oh, yes, of course. What am I it's saying? Mary Shelley's What am I saying? It. Sorry. Okay. Um, but 1995, listen. 
now you're peaking now. Maybe the strongest year of films of all time, by the way. Yeah. And I'm not just saying that because Showgirls came out in that year. Hey. Okay. Great film. Great fucking, great fucking movie. Great fucking movie. Oh, great fucking movie. Great fucking movie. Great fucking movie. Hey. Great fucking movie. Hey. Great fucking movie. Hey. All right. Go on. Casino and Heat in the same year. I mean, are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? That's deep. I mean, how can you beat that? You how can you beat that? You I think in my top 10 favorite films of all time, yeah. I, could, I think I might put Casino and Heat both in the top 10. And De Niro is basically starring in both of them. That's 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 pretty I hard mean, to beat. Heat is exceptional, as you know. I'm not the. I mean, like, not that Casino is a bad film. I just don't think it's a, like a wow film. But Heat could be the greatest film ever. Could be, by the way. It could be the greatest film ever. Easy to make an argument for that. It's yes. It could be the yeah. Okay. Um, and then obviously follows it up. Uh, and, and of course now I think films are getting pumped out with more regularity. Yes, You're not doing one course. film a year. Yes. You've got. In the next year, you've got a cameo in Sleepers, yes. like a re reasonably good film. Yeah, there's no streaming services. Video games haven't taken over like they have now. No. So it's all about the movies. Okay, The Fan. TV wasn't like that big. No, 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 no. TV wasn't. I mean, The Fan. Tell me about The Fan. I, I, a bit of a crap you, film. We, our friendship was almost like crippled by our differing views on this film. I love The Fan. You hate The Fan. You First know, of all, Tony I Scott just, directs it. I just it. feel there's some things. Like, I don't feel like De Niro can play the everyman. I just don't find it believable. But he's not playing the everyman. Like, he's playing a disturbed... You know what he's playing in the ordinary fan? Ordinary guy. He's it's playing, like... He's playing... You know what he's playing in the fan? You're not seeing the nuance, my friend. He is combining Rupert Pupkin with Max Cady. You bring those two together, and you have... I forgot what his name was in the fan. Gil Renard. <laughs> Very good. Okay. Who's, like, obsessed with, with the Wesley Snipes... Uh, character who's this like you know like baseball player who's joined his favorite team the San Francisco Giants Bobby Rayburn by the way yeah um, and uh, I, I've seen that recently and and I I don't love it as much as I loved it when it first came out in 96 is it crap no it's good <laughs> okay but you know what you know what it is it's a Tony Scott film it's a Tony Scott film and it's like it's got the kind of um, testosterone laced frenetic camera work that, that are synonymous with Tony Scott yes, film. Yes, true. Okay. And I think De Niro is playing like this kind of unhinged character very well in it. But it's not an amazing film, but still, I'm giving him kudos for that. And Snipes at the top of his game in that Fine. film, by the way. All right. Copland, Jackie Brown, Great Expectations. Cameo, cameo, cameo. Cameo, cameo, cameo. I think he's awful in Jackie Brown. Okay. I think Jackie Brown is an excellent film. All right. I think it's slightly underrated. But I think De Niro is not great in it at all. Um, again, trying to play this like, like he needs to play larger than life characters. He needs to play, you know, you know, I don't know, big characters, people who are like, like are scared of them. Okay. And this, the guy he plays in Jackie Brown, who I like Ben Braddock is Chuck Norris in, in uh, I think, Missing in Action. You know, that kind of character. Sure. Right? Exactly. Right. Okay. Yeah. Anyway, point <laughs> being, what was the other film? Um, uh, Jackie Brown Copland. Copland, yeah. again, it's a bit of a minor character, but not bad. Not bad. He's better in that. He's better in that. Well, that's the line that we like. <laughs> you blew it! <laughs> Sorry. Hand, hands are tied now. Hands are tied now. Oh, and that, that, that's, by the way, idiosyncrasies. We should we'll come on to idiosyncrasies in the next part about, like, you know, how they became parodies of themselves. Yes, but but yes. by the way, with De Niro, yes. the, what's the main idiosyncrasy is that kind of, like, put your hands up in the air. Yeah. Yeah, that is yeah. right. Whereas Pacino is much more like, who uh, yeah, like, shout ah, it, yeah, exactly. Ah, ah, ah. Okay, which was like, which became like his basically like his his defining um, soundbite characteristic idiosyncrasy in that year. But De Niro was like this, this, and also by the way, and it's a hybrid of the same thing with De Niro. Hey, yeah, do something a little bit. Exactly. You know, exactly. Little, no, and you know what? Drinks we're are on that. The, we're on that house. path now. We're on that path where, where they're, they're mailing sort of it in, like mailing it in yeah. now. They, they've realized what like the audience wants from them. They're like, okay, you know, we need to like, just sprinkle a bit of this, sprinkle a bit of that. We don't need to give it too much. Anyway, they're getting older. They can't you blame know, them. You the know, Nero, big investor in Nobu at this point. So Exactly, you know, like, they've on. got other interests. Yeah. They've got like a thousand like <laughs> kids and another hundred grandkids. So they're like, frick, and somebody's got to, you know, feed these people, right? So now they're doing all these little movies that they don't like. And so now the reputation is starting to diminish. Okay, but no, but like- I'm But you're right. But. The Adventures of Rocky and Bullwinkle. And we're back. Yeah, I know. One of the biggest, I think, alongside Norbit, one of the biggest box office bombs of all time. Yeah. But actually, De Niro, by the way, Ronin, good, good film. And then, and then, 
In 99. Wow, man, they made, they made a lot they of movies. They made a lot of movies. But, but by the way, in 99, what would be the this kind of... This is going to be a bitch to edit, but go on. <laughs> <laughs> it's our finest work yet. We're going to win an Oscar for this. So in, in 1999, um, um, analyze this. Yeah. Now, this is one of the great comedies of all time. Where And this is the birth of De Niro as a comedian. And he would play no. this kind of... What about your other film? The Irishman? Midnight Run. Yes. No, no, of course, but you know what the thing with Midnight Run? Oh, Midnight Run is a, it's not. No, it's Midnight Run is not an out and out comedy. Oh, and it's a he's road not movie. Being, and he's not being funny. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, analyze this or that or whatever it is. He is well, being funny. Analyze this is a more he's out a and out comedy. He's a straight man. Grodin right. is the funny guy. Yeah. Uh, it's the yes, yes, and but in analyze this, he's it's an out and out comedy, right? Where he's become. It's a farce. He, it's a farce where he's playing like. A, a parody, a, of, a parody himself. of himself as the disgruntled mobster He's, yeah. who's, who's got like PTSD, yeah. who um, is breaking down and crying over like his past crimes, who's trying to like reform his life and seeks the advice from a shrink played by Billy Crystal. And the sequel is atrocious, by the way, surprisingly, but nevertheless, analyze this, one of the great comedies of all time. But this is how he caps off the 90s in very, very strong form. Now, by the way, we need to just, uh, we need to move faster with Pacino. So I'm going to, I'm going to give the 80s nod to De Niro. Okay. Be, you know, I said the 70s belong to Pacino slightly, 80s to De Niro, 90s. Okay. So De Niro's very strong entries, but Pacino starting off strong. Dick Tracy playing Big Boy Caprice. Okay. Bit of a flop. Also nominated, surprisingly. The neck and the same year, Godfather Corruption. Three. Godfather Three. I mean, yeah, okay, fine, but like, why the hair? Why, why? Like, oh, the I hair will put you off. It does. Okay, I, I have to say, Godfather Three, although it's not as strong an entry as the previous you like two. It. Okay, and I know that I people... like it too. I mean, she's obviously there's the whole Sofia Coppola thing, which is not great. It kind of takes you out of it. Yeah, but there's Andy Garcia. There's Garcia is good. I mean, there's a lot of things that are just. If they had been just tweaked a little bit, it would have been a great film. Okay, it's I mean, a shame about that. I don't, I don't, I don't hold the same kind of uh, what do you call it? antipathy and uh, malaise for it that people who and I'll tell you why. Can I just tell you it why? It does have a great end scene. Oh, with the audio, the way they play with the audio. Oh, the, the, with the, the operatic. The, and the, then the scream at the yeah. end where you don't hear it, and then it kicks in, and the operatic. Yes. Yeah, it's great. And and I think that's that, editing. That's post. I, people, people were like up in arms and uh, had uh, reviled it. A lot, not ever. I mean, it was it was nominated for Best Picture, by the way. But uh, in the same year that Goodfellas was nominated, um, neither of them won. Lost out to um, Dances with Wolves. Where is that film now? Yeah, exactly. Oh. Um, but anyways, um, I think that's. I think it's an underrated film. I actually still love that film. I saw. You know what? Because I was like ten years old when it came. I, it's the first Godfather I saw. And I saw it in the cinema. So actually, like when I watched it for the first time, I saw this, the, the, the its, its predecessors before. So I actually have an affection for number three. But 1992, by the way, mm. how are we doing? Good. 1992. I need to go to the bathroom, but good. Two, you just sit down. <laughs> two of the strong, Glenn Gary, Glenn Ross. Yes. And Scent of a Woman. Again, Oscar nominated for both. By the way. In what? Good hair moment in uh, Glenn Gary. Uh... Or no. The entire movie. Yeah. Great hair. As Richard yeah, Roman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Based on the play by David Mamet. Yes. One of my favorite films of all time. How would you rank it? I mean, it is favorite. a masterpiece. One of my favorite. It's, it's funny. Not a lot of people like it because it is a, it's, it's a play. It's, it's based a play, on a yeah. play. Yeah. And sometimes plays don't kind of translate onto celluloid. But I really like it. I mean, I guess if you've seen the play, maybe it's better. We haven't seen the play. Wouldn't you love to see the play now? I would. I would love to see the play now. But right. this is... This Starring is, Stallone. Oh, of course, and Chuck Norris. <laughs> <laughs> Chuck Norris is, how would you in the Kevin Spacey role, right? As the in the as the as the head of the office. Um, but Stallone has to be Alec Baldwin. <laughs> yes, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's right. Uh, but Pacino's playing. Um, oh, Baldwin. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, but and by the way, I think this. It's. I don't know if it's set a record. But from the most curse words or the most f words no, I on think, screen. I mean, I think a Tarantino as, film is probably beaten. But that. maybe at the time. Maybe at the time. At the time, I know it's. I know it's famous for the number of curse words, like that. It, it, it's it, you know, that were that yeah. were that were uttered in it. Yes. Okay, the f bombs that they dropped. Um, what amazing work! And Jack Lemmon is is obviously. I mean, he's the senior character. That that's a m magnificent performance. I think talk he should about, have been. Talk about expression. Oof. Talk about how like you can like, you know. Uh, uh, kind of put across your emotion just in like a movement of an eyebrow or like you know a movement of your lip mm. 
or something like that you just you kind of get every sense of how what he's going through in just the way he looks Jack it's Lemon. amazing yeah. yeah and the and the and Pacino's obviously playing the the kind of star of this bombastic again very bombastic but 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 not Overacting or no? No, by no, this point. no, no. Justified? Just, justified, justified. There's, there's, there's the best scene in the film. It's, it, it's a scene early in the film when he's trying to sell the Jonathan Price character a piece of worthless real yeah, estate yeah, land. Yeah, 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 yeah. And the lines he drops in. I mean, yeah. this is David Mamet's like, it's like gold is coming out of his pen while he's writing this, right? It's just the most magnificent, seductive um, uh, monologue he gives him about life, love, you know, the pursuit of happiness and is selling this kind of unwitting Jonathan Price character, is very unsure of himself, trying to get him to buy this piece of land that's basically like a dud. Yeah. Okay. It's just, it's amazing writing and it's, and it's, it's, it's very faithfully executed by all the, uh, the, the actors involved. Anyways, the same year, Scent of a Woman, finally Pacino wins his Oscar in one of his most um, um, iconic performances, one of his most quotable uh, films, right? This is where the hoo starts, okay? And many variations of that have come since in films like City Hall and Devil's Advocate and Any Given Sunday and so on and so forth. Okay, a film that I actually love, okay? Uh, um, uh, people feel that this was a kind of um, a mercy Oscar mm, mm. given to him for, you know, services rendered the same way that Newman won yeah, the Oscar happens, for, col for Color of Money. Or Scorsese won for The Departed. Exactly right, exactly right. Um, but a good performance, a great, and you know, the courtroom scene at the end, uh, it's, it's great theater, it's great entertainment. Okay. The year after, maybe our favorite Pacino film of all time, Carlito's Way. We've talked about that. We've give, dedicated an entire episode to that. Okay, we, not much more needs to be said. If you haven't seen Carlito's Way, go watch that. Okay, we've got- Link in the comment section. We've got Heat, obviously. We've just talked about that, where he played opposite De Niro. And we've dedicated an entire episode to that in the past, okay? Where the two screen actors combine and converge, yeah. okay? In one of the great, great uh, films of all time, one of the great acting montages of all time, right? Um, what else have you got in uh, you've got City Hall not bad not great All right. Devil's so, Advocate okay, now what year are we in we're uh, almost at the end Devil's Advocate and obviously there's, a, there's he did a film called Looking for Richard um, and then obviously by the way in 1999 two amazing entries now Pacino's like now 60 Any Given Sunday uh, directed by Oliver Stone and The Insider by Michael Mann I know you're kind of I need to like I need to get, about I, this need, film. I, need, I think I need a second viewing okay now they're entering this is I'm giving the 90s to Pacino okay and I think my three favorite Pacino film all 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 were made in the 90s I'm gonna say my three favorite Pacino films unusual choices heat maybe not so unusual Carlito's way and any given Sunday right I don't know my three favorite Pacino, uh, De Niro films I have to think about that but Pacino I think those are my three most rewatched films okay and then you, you're getting into now like their 60s where you know we start tinkering off a little bit right De Niro uh, let me start with Pacino Pacino starts playing now this kind of avuncular he starts playing mentor, himself and the mentor yeah, yeah, character yeah, 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 yeah. right so the rookie no no uh, the recruit the recruit, recruit sorry recruit, yeah. Yeah, yeah so rookie is Clint Eastwood yeah and Sheen great movie great directed movie. by Clint Eastwood so I think here he starts playing what um, it, this is. This is interesting. This is an interesting contrast between the two guys. Pacino's this bombastic kind of like hyper uh, theatrical operatic type actor, right? And in, he starts. He takes on in his sixties the kind of mentor role. Okay, so it actually started actually in the nineties. But in Devil's Advocate, he's he's the mentor to Keanu Reeves. In um, in City Hall, he's the mentor to Cusack. Actually, in Scent of a Woman, he's the mentor to O'Donnell. And then um, in Any Given Sunday, the mentor to Jamie Foxx. And it goes, then it starts becoming like, he's taking more of a backseat. Colin Farrell in The Recruit, Matthew McConaughey in Two for the Money. Um, some other films are, are, will come to me right now. Um, but he's, he, he takes on that kind of like uh, older, wiser man persona. The same way Connery did. Exactly like Connery did, like after his love in the in the in the eighties and nineties. Think about what Connery did when he was like, he was kind of older. He's a bit more grizzled. He's he's the mentor to Alec Baldwin, Hunt for October. He's the mentor to um, Nicolas Cage in The Rock, to Catherine Zeta Jones in Entrapment. To um, there's a few others. Um, anyways, we you know there there are others. Uh, what else is Connery in as the mentor in um, Name of the Rose? 
Christian oh yeah, yeah, Slater. to Christian Slater. Yeah, exactly. Um, like so he, yeah, I, I'm, I, it is, yeah. We're losing daylight. Absolutely. We, we, <laughs> okay, we? so whereas De Niro starts taking De Niro, who's the more subdued, shy, um, what do you call it, um, averse to introverted, the spotlight, yes. introverted character, becomes this sort of like outwardly funny comedic actor, right, and makes a fortune playing. Uh, comedic roles, analyze this, analyze that, meet the parents, meet the fuckers, meet the whatever, meet the little fuckers, right? Um, Showtime, opposite Eddie Murphy, underrated by the way, bombed at the box office, but underrated. I've got other ones by the way for you. Um, don't get me started on um, uh, Righteous Kill, their second collaboration together. Terrible, at the box office bomb. But anyways, so- 50 Cent very good though in that. Yeah, I like it when they smack him around, these two like guys, like oh, basically 70. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And they're like smacking him 50 Cent around. And he has to he has to pretend like he's like, you know, getting intimidated by these like old grizzled det like detectives. Anyway, um, so uh, where were we? So, um, so this is, now De Niro was a comedian. Listen, I think we need to now that there were. The, I mean, obviously, they've made a lot of films subsequently. Any standouts up until you mean now? up and after that? Listen, kind of listen, like, listen. I mean, yes, of course. No, the by, the way, by the way, Silver Linings Playbook, very good, very good. De Niro, He's excellent in that. Pacino, what has he made in like? Well, he was nominated for the Irishman. I mean, awful film. I don't like it. You know what no. I like with De Niro? Last Vegas. Fine, but these are not films that are. These are just like yes, not timeless. Yeah, uh, I okay. mean, I mean, they may appeal to you, but they're not like out and out wow films. Grudge Match. Every bit as good as Raging Bull and Rocky. I mean, I mean, it is. It's Lamora versus Lamora yeah, versus Rocky Balboa, Balboa yeah. come together in grudge match. Yeah, I was so excited for that when it came it out. It didn't work. It was awful. Like I remember seeing. It the was trailer. awful. Maybe we saw the yeah. trailer together. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. This is it. And this you know, it had film. it had good taglines that I can't quite remember. Yes. Uh, yes. I can't remember what it was. It had a great tagline. Yeah. I'm like, that's so clever. Anyway, whatever, go on. Like, uh, I'm looking at Keep some of punching? the new... Was that it? No, I think it was. <laughs> Dirty Grandpa, one of your favorites? I mean, all, all of them. Yeah. Now all the films, like, is there anything good that comes out? Killers of the Flower Moon. I didn't... I, didn't, I was not, not a big yeah, fan of that, okay. by the way. Um, and... Nothing for Patch. Oh, you know what was good? The Intern. The Intern That was, was very, good. very good. Another, with, yes, the, I'm just saying. But nothing really for Pacino, Pacino right? Pacino, Jack and Jill. Fine. I mean, uh, the Dunkin' Donuts part. Amazing. That's the best part. Fantastic. Oh, well, though Pacino moved into like a, a TV a little bit. Um, yes, he did that uh, the film. The Hunters. Yes, what was something. it called? Yes, The Hunters. Yeah, or something yeah, like okay. that. Yeah, okay. Anyway, it was not great. But here's the thing. Okay, now let's. Look, we're going to have to wrap this up. Who is your favorite? I think on balance. Let like, me ask I'm, you this. Okay. This is what's interesting. Go on. Now. Who's better in which genre and the roles they uh, play? Yeah, that's what I'd say. And, okay. And I would like to also so you, add an addendum you, to that. Yes. No, you. If they about could have played the others, who could have played the others' roles with more simplicity? I think they probably could have done both. Um. Uh, you know what? But I, here's no, no. But let's but let's answer yeah. the first question. Okay. First. Okay. Go on. It's quite obvious that Pacino plays the like romantic lead a lot better than De Niro. De Niro can't do it. So. And yeah. with comedies, De Niro does a lot better than Pacino. Ironic. Considering Ironic. their personalities. Absolutely. Yeah. Right. And, and by the way, you, it's true because the two, we didn't probably mention it, we just mentioned it quickly, but the two great romantic performances of, of Pacino are uh, Carlito's Way, gangster film, but it's, it's a great love story. Scent of a Woman is somewhat of a romantic film, although yes, there's no like female kind of uh, counterpart in yeah. that, but still he plays a, like sort of a, a romantic person. Right? A very romantic yeah. person, yeah. Um, and uh, Frankie and Johnny. Was, and Frankie was, and Johnny. And all of these kind of films. You mentioned Sea of oh, Love. Oh, Sea of Love, yeah. Yes, you mentioned yeah. Sea of Love. Comedies, the, obviously De Niro is better. In terms of playing villainous characters, okay. uh, they're both kind of same. Devil's Advocate, Cape Fear, maybe you give it to De Niro. I think the, I think the most villainous character, yeah. uh, the, the best villainous character, if you're to compare their filmographies, is obviously De Niro's performance as yeah. Max Cady and Cape yeah, Fear. Yeah, yeah, That's yeah, the yeah. most scary. Yeah, yeah. And, De Niro's never played a villainous character that I can think of where you're you're rooting for him to go down. I mean, they, they play gangsters. Now, the question is, is that who's the better gangster? Because these were the genres in which they were born, into which they were born. And and you know what an interesting question for you, because you're a big gangster fan. Yeah. How do they interpret the gangster genre? Because they, they don't listen, play the same listen, kind of gangster listen, no, each but, like, but I don't think they're a million miles apart right. either. Okay. Listen, they come, they have the same background, they've grown up with the same influences, right? 
And I think they interpret things in the same way. Who do I think is better? I would probably say, because I just prefer, I would say De Niro maybe. Because as the gangster. My, yeah, as my love for Goodfellas, because I think Goodfellas is the greatest. However, it's a different type of gangster, right? You have this guy, Pacino and Godfather, who come from a long lineage of gangsters and has his roots firmly in Italy. You know, De Niro in Goodfellas is a different type of guy. He's a more of an American gangster. Yeah. And, right? and like and a, and a, low, a slightly lower level gangster. Absolutely. But, but actually, I think Pacino nailed it best as playing the Lefty. the bottom feeder gangster in Donnie Brasco. Yes, yes, Which is like yes, yes, an yes. exceptional performance that, that, that was often forgotten amongst, the, amongst, their, amongst their amazing catalogs. Um, that's kind of like a heartbreaking, heart-wrenching kind of doomed performance. Um, so I, I think De Niro is better at playing like the the it's tough a shame guy, about the tough, that film. The that film, guy I gangster. feel, could be a little lot better if they. I think they miscast uh, Depp. I you think Depp, said that. Depp Why do you say that? It just doesn't work for I me. Johnny Depp right being this like undercover cop. It just does not work for me. Anyway, you wanted Chuck Norris. Okay, now question. Question for you. Okay, before we wrap this up. Yeah. Could this and this is actually a very good question in determining who's the great actor who's going had they played the other character and if you think about it yeah in their let, let's say they're more I think Goodfellas both could have I think I don't think I think I think Godfather both could have played you think they both could have played yes okay. I think definitely they could have okay I, I, I think, think definitely they could they could have both been Michael could De Niro have played the Tony Montana no no okay could Pacino have played I don't think Pacino could have played the Meet character. the Fockers? Yes. Meet the parents? Yes. I mean, okay, well... I think he could have. He's, I mean, why has he never tried, to, tried his hand at comedy then? Okay. Could he have played... Um, I'm trying to think. Taxi could, could De Niro have played uh, Carlitos Way? You know what? I think anything with that accent he can't do. Okay, so that's interesting. Could he have played Scent of Woman? Maybe not. We said, like, he plays the better comedians. He plays the better romantic leads. Pacino, De Niro. De Niro is a better, you know, funny guy. So, you know, it is what it is. I mean, these are all, like, whataboutisms. We can never, like, And how about really this know. whataboutism? Let us know what you think. Could... Who what? do you think... Is there one of the actors who could have done a better job in one of the other's films? Okay, well, one, one, one thing. Had you switched them around in Heat... Yeah. Right? Had you switched them around in Heat... Yeah. How would the film have played out? And who would have played the other's role better could like so in other words the I think Niro, interchangeable huh I think I don't think you see I, I disagree with you completely okay. I disagree with you completely. I actually cannot see Pacino playing Did you, the master thief it's been done no like, I don't me, think so I tell you if it was the other way around yeah and it worked and it came out and I we posed the same question you would have been like no way no way you think no so way. you forget about it yeah exactly okay so how are we finishing this off or have we finished it off who did you say your favorite was I think I'm giving the slight nod to Pacino and I'll, 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 I'll base it and I'll conclude it on this point, right? I think he has more fun films. I think he has more like rewatchable films. I, I don't know why. I think that, I think that the- For um, me, it's gonna be De Niro, although it I changes. Like I like that, I like that word. For around. me, it's gonna be De Niro. I mean, I just gotta look at the films I like the most. I mean, I love Heat. But okay, so they're both, both in it, them. okay. I love Goodfellas. So De Niro. So that kind of takes it a little bit. I mean, are there Pacino films that are like amongst my favorites? No. Not really. Then it's De Niro for you. I mean, I, I love I, lo I love Deer Hunter, for example. Yeah, I love There's Deer Hunter too. something about Deer Hunter that I love. I mean, a bit of a long wedding scene. But aside from that, yeah. it's amazing, you know. Um, but you know what? I mean, in, in the pantheon of Italian-American actors, as you said, stemming from, you know, starting with, at the pinnacle, Stallone, and then Brando. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Danny Aiello? No, 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 sorry. <laughs> b b b before that, Machio, Stallone. <laughs> Ralph Machio, you know yeah, I mean? yeah, yeah, yeah. And then Brando. It's true. I think they're it's, up there. They're amongst the best. Who's your favorite? Please let us know. Uh, comment, like, subscribe, all that good stuff. This was very in-depth. Thank you. I think so, too. Night is about to fall. Yeah. So we leave it there. Good job. Good job you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>